guys happy weekend. Hope you guys are uh, able to get out and enjoy some of the sunshine today. Georgie and I are having a nice relaxing day inside. He's not feeling very well because he's getting um, two teeth. You want to show them your teeth? No. He's, he's really not feeling well. He's been having a nice cuddly day with mama. Um, so he's going to help me here. Hopefully he'll be helpful. We're going to get into lesson 11. Lesson 11 and lesson 12. Basically the same learning targets. We are working on multi-step word problems. So it is critical that you really understand the problem before you start solving it. And it's also really, really important to document the information given in some sort of visual diagram. Um, and just really take it one step at a time. Those visual visual diagrams or tape diagrams or whatever we're going to use will help us understand what we've solved and what we still need to solve. So you'll see what I mean. Let's take a look at a few problems, guys. Can you say bye bye, Georgie. Bye bye, fifth graders. Welcome <laughs> to get us started here. Um, we're working on our problem set. This is number two. Um, so here goes nothing. Let's read the problem first and really try to understand what's happening before we even start doing any calcul calculations. Um, I think this name is Matildi, or is it Math Ildi? Someone that really likes math has 20 pints of green paint, so that's why I chose green. She uses two fifths of it to paint a landscape and three tenths of it while painting a clover. She decides that for her next painting, she will need 14 pints of green paint. She really likes green paint. How much more paint will she need to buy? Wow. Okay, so let's organize what we have first. So. What we have, or what Math Hildy or Matt Hildy has, is green paint. She has 20 pints of green paint. So this rectangle represents what we're starting with. She has 20 pints of green paint. So she's going to use some of it to paint a landscape. She's going to use some of it to paint a clover. And then she's going to use the leftover um, for her next painting. But as the, as, um, it looks like we're doing some inferring. How much more will she need to buy? It looks like, or you guys can probably use your logic. We're not going to have 14 pints left over because we're kind of using quite a bit for the landscape and the clover. Okay, so. Let's chop up this tape diagram into tenths because we're going to, we want, I want two fifths and three tenths to be common denominators because they'll be much easier um, to work with if they have the same denominator. So let's transform two fifths into a fraction that has a denominator of 10. We can do that very easily. We know that five times two is 10. So if we're going to multiply 5 times 2, the bottom will multiply 2 by 2 at the top and we'll get 4 tenths. So 2 fifths and 4 tenths represent the same amount, but this fraction we're going to use because it has a denominator of 10. So let's put this into our tape diagram. Well, let's slice our tape diagram into 10 equal parts. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so 4 tenths, 1, 2, 3, 4 tenths, two, 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 4 tenths are being used for a landscape. And then we have 3 tenths, 1, 2, 3 tenths are being used to paint the clover. Okay, so we're using quite a bit of that 20 pints of green paint. Four tenths for the landscape, three tenths for the clover. We do have this left. We have three tenths left. We need to figure out what exactly is three tenths of 20. Three tenths of 20. 
we need to figure out what is 3 tenths of 20, so then we can evaluate how much more she's going to need if she needs 14 pints for her next masterpiece. So we know how to do 3 tenths of 20. 3 tenths of 20 is just 3 tenths times 20, which equals 3 times 20 on the top over 10. <gasps> I've seen opportunity for simplification. 10 and 20 are both divisible by 10. So when we divide 10 by 10, we get 1. When we divide 20 by 10, we get 2. What we're left with is 6 over 1, or just 6. Okay. So 3 tenths of 20 is equal to 6. She has 6 pints left over. She needs 14 pints for her next masterpiece. masterpiece. If we have 6 pints, she needs 14 pints. Let's figure out how much more she needs to buy at the paint store. All we need to do is 14. All we need to do is 14 minus 6. Um, 14 minus 6. Oh, Georgie. 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 Oh boy. Okay, honey. What are you doing? Sorry, guys. How are you doing, George? You okay, Bob? What are you doing, George? Okay, baby. Okay. Sorry, guys. George is just choking on something. You're okay, though, right, baby? He just wanted in on this. Okay, 14 minus 6, Georgie. We have to borrow, so it's 14, yeah, four, I guess I didn't have to do that. 14 minus 6 um, is equal to 8. She's going to need to buy 8 more pints of paint. Okay, guys, I found a really good one here. George is a little nervous about it, but George... I promise they can handle it. Okay, so let's read this problem. We have Jack, Jill, and Bill each carried a 48-ounce bucket full of water down the hill. By the time they reached the bottom, Jack's bucket was only three-fourths full, Jill's was two-thirds full, and Bill's was one-sixth full. How much water did they spill altogether on their way down the hill. Oh boy. Okay, so let's just take this one step at a time, you guys. Let's organize what we know about each of our friends here. We know that Jack, well, we know all of them, each of their buckets carried 48 ounces of water total. So, um, let's, <laughs> let's make a tape diagram for each of them. Let's move this out of the way. Not that much out of the way. Computer. Oh, come on. Sorry, guys. Let's move that down here. Okay. So Jack had, oh, sorry, had his 48-ounce bucket full of water, and he spilled, so we'll, we'll talk about what he had left, and then we'll figure out what he spilled. So, um... By the time he got down to the hill, at the, at the bottom of the hill, his bucket was only, wait, no, Georgie, it's exciting, three-fourths full. Okay, so this is how much water Jack had. He had three-fourths of 48 ounces. Let's check out what situation Jill found herself in at the bottom of the hill. So... Jill's bucket at the bottom of her journey was two thirds of the way full. So Jill had two thirds of her bucket full. And then Bill. Bill was working with six. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Bill's bucket was one sixth 
of the way full. Okay. So the blue indicates how much water they had left at the bottom of the hill. The question that we are asking is how much did they spill? So let's just set up a quick list of what was spilled. So here, what was spilled was, so Jack had three-fourths left, so he spilled one-fourth. Want to play, 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 play? He spilled one-fourth. Oh, he spilled one-fourth. Jill had two-thirds left in her bucket, so she spilled one-third on the way down the hill. And then Bill only had one-sixth left in his bucket, which means that he spilled five-sixths of his bucket on the way down the hill. So, one-fourth, one-third, and five-sixths of what? Each of them was carrying 48 ounce ounces. So, Jack spilled one-fourth of 48, or one-fourth times 48. Jill spilled one-third of 48, or one-third times 48. Bill spilled five-sixths of 48, or five-sixths of 48. Now let's figure out, we need to figure out how much water did they spill all together. In order to do that, we'll do one times 48 for Jack over four, which equals 48 over four, which equals 48 divided by four equals 12, and that's 12 ounces. Let's check out what's going on with Jill. So we have one times 48 on the top, and that is over three, which equals 48 divided by three, which is equal to, I just did some long division over here on the side, uh, which is equal to 16 ounces. Okay, now let's check out what's going on with Bill. So we have five times 48 up top over six. I see an opportunity for simplification because six and 48 are each divisible by six. When we divide six by six, we get one. When we divide 48 by six, we get eight. So what we have is five times eight, which equals 40 ounces. Wow, Bill spilled a lot of water on the way down. Now we need to figure out combined Jack plus Jill plus Bill. So Jack spilled 12 ounces of water. Jill spilled 16 ounces of water. And Bill spilled 40 ounces of water. We want to know how much was spilled all together. So we have 12 plus 16 plus 40. 12 plus 16 is 28. 28 plus 40 is equal to 68 ounces of water. All together, our friends spilled 68 ounces of water. Wow. Okay, kiddos, let's uh, just look at one more problem here. Uh, it involves cookies and kids, so I think you'll like this. Okay, so Mrs. Diaz makes five dozen cookies for her class. Of course, we're reading the problem before we start any calculations. Do not just pull random numbers out of the problem and start dividing them or multiplying them or adding them or... What have you? Let's read the problem and understand it before we just start blindly calculating things. Mrs. Diaz makes five dozen cookies for her class. One ninth of her 27 students are absent the day she brings the cookies. If she shares the cookies equally among the students are pre who are present, ooh, tough, tough luck kids that are absent, how many cookies will each student get? Okay, so let's really understand the problem. So here's the deal. We have a really, really nice teacher who's making cookies for her kids. Wow, where does she find the time? However, three, or I, no, I shouldn't say that. Uh, one ninth of her, of her class is absent the day she brings the cookies. We need to figure out how many kids are absent. We can do that 
by using the information that we're given. Let's set that up. Oops, sorry, I'm holding George. So my rectangle does not quite look like a rectangle. I know, I know, we're almost done. Georgie is over math videos with mommy. Um, yeah. So this is supposed to be our tape diagram. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, let just just humor me, kids. If I make this a little bit. Okay, so 27. This represents Mrs. Diaz's entire class. There's 27 kids in her class. However, there's one ninth that are absent. So let's cut this into nine equal slices. Six, seven, eight, we have one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. One ninth are absent. Let's figure out how many kids are absent. We can figure that out by finding one ninth of 27. You guys know one ninth of 27 equals one ninth times 27. We can do that very easily. One times 27, very easily I mean. One times 27 is 27 and that's over nine. 27 over 9 equals 27 divided by 9, which equals 3. Okay, cool. So we know 3 kiddos are absent. So if 3 kiddos are absent, she has 27 kids in class, that means that there are 24 lucky kids that are getting the cookies. Okay. Here's something I noticed. I spent most of my morning grading exit tickets. Some of you squirrely fifth graders are dividing when we're like dividing food amongst people. Some of you are dividing the people amongst the food. These are not cannibal cookies. We are not dividing the kids to the cookies. We are dividing the cookies amongst the kids. That makes sense, right? How many cookies? Five dozen. Five copies of a dozen, which is 12. So we're working with 60 cookies. Please make sure that you understand what is being divided. The cookies are being divided, not the kids. We are not chopping up the kids and feeding the kids to the cookies. That's That would be too weird. It would be much more normal to divide the cookies and give them to the kids, right? Okay, so we have a lot of cookies. 60 cookies, in fact. 60 cookies. They are being divided amongst 24 kids. I'm not do 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 Thanks, George. They are being divided amongst 24 kids. I'm not going to draw 23 lines. So all we simply have to do here, you guys, is do 60 divided by 24. We're dividing the cookies by the children. Um, that reminds me of our secret word. We're going to make our secret word chocolate chip cookies. 60 divided by 24. We can just quickly take a look at that. Long division. How many 24s go into 60? 2 with some left over. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 2 is 4. And what are we going to have left? 10 minus 8 is 2. 5 minus 4 is 1. So we have 2 and 12 24ths left over. Um, we can simplify 12 24ths as, sorry, actually, as, I just realized that's an error eraser. Uh, 12 24ths is equal to 1 half. So each of those lucky kiddos gets 2 and 1 half cookies. It's too bad if they the kid, for the kids that were absent. Have a great uh, rest of your Sunday, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay.